Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfeth. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, who presented His Majesty with the first edition of his book on the history of the judiciary in Bahrain. The book documents the march of the judiciary since the establishment of the modern state in Bahrain in 1873 during the era of the founder Sheikh Ahmed Al Fatah under the second third of 2021 during His Majesty's prosperous era. His Majesty the King gave directives to speed up the resumption of prayers at mosques to their pre-pandemic level while complying with the health guidelines in force in order to enable worshippers to perform their prayers easily. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the SCIA president for his valuable book commending the efforts exerted by the writer to compile his book containing valuable information that documents the development stages and landmark achievements of the Bahraini judiciary. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain has enjoyed over many decades a regular judiciary that has been through its integrity and independence able to contribute to the progress of the kingdom in all fields, praising the organization and continuous development witnessed by the Bahraini judiciary in its structure and legislation. His Majesty stressed that the kingdom's judiciary has managed throughout its successful march to achieve justice and secure the rights of the citizens and residents in addition to promoting the principles of equality and preserving freedoms. Sheikh Abdurrahman expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his unwavering support to the SCIA, noting that his book documents the presence of the Bahraini judiciary in five chapters and includes an important vision of the interactions, transformations and political, economic, social and religious changes that have occurred in the kingdom and their effects on the judicial, legal and legislative structure. He expressed hope that his book will be a catalyst for researchers to pay more attention to objective documentation in various fields. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the Libyan Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Minister Dr. Nejla El Mangush, who is on a visit to the kingdom. Dr. El Mangush conveyed to His Majesty the King greetings and appreciation from the Chairman of the Libyan Presidential Council, Mohammed El Menfi, and Prime Minister of the Libyan Government of National Unity, Abu Hamid Dabeba, as well as their wishes of further progress and prosperity to Bahrain and its people. His Majesty the King welcomed the Libyan Foreign Minister and requested her to convey her his greetings to the chairman of the Libyan Presidential Council, Prime Minister of the Libyan Government of National Unity and the broadly Libyan people, as well as his wishes of continued security, stability and prosperity to Libya. His Majesty lauded the solid fraternal relations between the two countries and their keenness to bolster bilateral cooperation across various fields for the best interests of the two broadly peoples. During the meeting, His Majesty the King was briefed by the Foreign Minister, Dr. Al Mangush, about the latest Libyan developments and the efforts being made to lead the transitional phase and hold the international conference to support the stability of Libya later this month. His Majesty underlined the Kingdom's support for the unremitting efforts exerted by Libya to lay the foundations of security, stability and peace in all parts of the country, stressing the importance of taking steps to support stability in Libya and the exit of foreign forces in order to preserve Libya's sovereignty, independence and territorial integrity, as well as holding the scheduled presidential and parliamentary elections to achieve the aspirations of the broadly Libyan people for development and prosperity. His Majesty expressed his confidence in the ability of the brothers in Libya to overcome all the challenges of the current phase. The meeting also touched on the latest regional and international developments. Libya's Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation expressed her thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the Kingdom's honourable stances in support of her country during the difficult stages it is going through. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace ambassadors of the Kingdom of Bahrain to Sudan and Belgium, Abdullah Rabia and Abdullah Faisal Jabr al-Dosiri, who took the legal oath before His Majesty on the occasion of the issuance of the Royal Decree, appointing them as ambassadors extraordinary and philanthropy. His Majesty the King congratulated them on their appointment, wishing them every success in their new diplomatic duties. He asked them to convey his greetings and best wishes to the head of Sudan's Sovereignty Council and the King of Belgium. He also directed them to serve the interests of the Bahraini community in both countries and cater to their needs. His Majesty the King affirmed the significant role of the Bahraini ambassadors in boosting relations and cooperation with other countries, stressing the Kingdom's keenness on building solid relations with broadly and friendly countries that are based on mutual respect. The two ambassadors extended sincere thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for the Noble Royal Trust.
The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, Hana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the efforts of the team Victorious Bahrain for Cycling and hailed their keenness to perform at the highest levels to achieve remarkable results in international participations. He praised winning the title of the biggest classic race in Paris Robix Championship in France that was achieved by cyclist Sonny Colbrelli, which is considered one of the most difficult races with its various challenges stages. He affirmed that Team Victorious Bahrain is on the right track to achieve the desired goals in addition to raise the status of the kingdom on the international level. He added that this achievement will motivate the team members further to exert more efforts in upcoming events and expressed full confidence in their capabilities. His Highness praised the high capabilities of the winner and his ability in making numerous accomplishments. His Highness wished the team further success. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Azhan Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited the Bahrain Rugby and Daya clubs as part of His Highness's keenness to enhance communication with sports facilities. His Highness met with the president of the rugby club, Mike Cunningham, and the president of Daya club, Hamad al Dosiri, as well as a number of members. His Highness expressed appreciation for the efforts of the rugby club in serving Bahraini sports and wished the two clubs for their success. His Highness then listened to a briefing from the Bidaya and Rugby Club presidents regarding their future plans that aim to develop the sports sector in the kingdom and toured the rugby club. For their part, the club's presidents expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid for his continuous support and hailed his efforts and contributions to serving the sports sector in the kingdom. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, held an official session of talks with the Libyan Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, Dr. Nejla Al Mangouche, on the occasion of her visit to the kingdom. At the beginning of the meeting, the Minister of Foreign Affairs welcomed his Libyan counterpart, praising the close brotherly relations between the two countries, the development and growth they are witnessing, and the joint endeavor to enhance bilateral cooperation in various fields. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed Bahrain's support for Libya in its efforts to achieve security and stability, reach a political solution that maintains Libya's sovereignty and independence, stop interference in its internal affairs and hold parliamentary elections on their scheduled time to achieve the aspirations of the broadly Libyan people. For her part, Dr. Nagla expressed the pleasure in visiting Bahrain, hailing the warm reception and hospitality she received and noting Bahrain's stance in support of the efforts of the Libyan government of national unity to restore peace, security and stability. The two sides discussed the course of the strong Bradley relations linking the two Bradley countries, means of enhancing bilateral cooperation in various fields and continuing joint coordination in international forums to serve the common interest of the two Bradley countries and people. The two sides also discussed developments in the political and security situation in Libya and the efforts made by the government of national unity with the support of the United Nations to reach a political settlement that restores security, peace and stability in Libya in addition to regional and international topics of common concern. 
Meanwhile, in a statement, the Minister of Foreign Affairs welcomed the visit of the Libyan Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Minister to the Kingdom of Bahrain. He affirmed His Majesty's support to the efforts exerted by Libya in order to consolidate peace, stability and security across Libya and preserve its sovereignty and achieve the aspirations of its people and further progress and prosperity for the country. He added that His Majesty expressed his confidence in the Libyan people and their abilities to overcome all challenges. The minister added that he held a fruitful meeting with his Libyan counterpart that included ways to further enhance the bilateral relations for the benefit of both countries and people. The Libyan Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Minister expressed pleasure to meet His Majesty the King and expressed appreciation for His Majesty's warm welcome and reception and for the many lessons she learned from His Majesty. She added that the key to Libya's stability depends on dialogue, wisdom and patience and affirmed that these lessons are what will help achieve further stability for Libya. The Libyan Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Minister Dr. Najla al and her accompanying delegation held a, had earlier arrived in Bahrain. Upon her arrival, she was received by the Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Abdul Tayyib bin Rashid Zayani and the Under Secretary for Consular and Administrative Affairs Ambassador Tawfiq Ahmed Al Mansour. On the occasion of World Habitat Day, the Minister of Housing, Basim Bin Yaqub Al Hamar, praised the Kingdom's efforts in implementing the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2030, specifically the 11th goal related to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable, as it is a priority national goal. The Minister said that Bahrain is one of the leading countries in implementing the Sustainable Development Goals, citing the first voluntary national report presented by Bahrain to the high level. Political Forum 2018 for Sustainable Development and the Sustainable Development Goals that explained the Kingdom's efforts and process in achieving these goals. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs condemned the ballistic missile attack fired by the Houthi terrorist militia on a Roda residential area in Ma'rab in Yemen, which resulted in the death of a number of children and injury of dozens of others in a cowardly terrorist attack that deliberately targeted the lives of civilians and it's a flagrant violation of international laws. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs expresses its sincere condolences to the families of the victims, the government and the people of Yemen and wishes a speedy recovery to all the injured, stressing Bahrain's full support for Yemen and its continuous efforts to achieve the aspirations of a broadly Yemeni people for security and stability and prosperity, calling on the international community to condemn the continued Houthi crimes that threaten security and stability in the region. Organized by the U.S. Embassy in Bahrain in collaboration with the American Chamber of Commerce in Bahrain, Discover America Week kicked off yesterday, celebrating the 15th anniversary of the U.S.-Bahrain Free Trade Agreement. It also highlights new businesses and investment opportunities in the food, tourism, health, energy and auto sector that are creating jobs and restoring economic prosperity to Bahrain's citizens and residents. U.S. Charity Affairs' Maggie Nardi elaborates. Here we are really pleased to be part of this event because it demonstrates how U.S. companies aren't just serving the community and taking something from it, but they're also giving back. And so it's really nice that they're working with the Royal Humanitarian Foundation this week. They work with the Down Syndrome Society uh, last week, and they're doing things on a regular basis to help support the community, and that's what's really important to us. We'll also have some virtual events just because, you know, the times are still changing. Uh, we'll have one on the new health care system here in Bahrain. Tahati, also on education opportunities in the U.S., how to get a visa, uh, and sustainable energy opportunities. So it's a mixture of things in all different sectors. But the main idea is just to remind people that we are here, that we are part of the community, and that we're really happy to support it. Bahrain ranked 78th on the Global Innovation Index 2020, which highlights the most recent global innovation trends. The index ranks 132 economies relying on 81 different indicators, and this year focuses on the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on innovation. To speak more about this ranking, we are joined over the phone by the president of Artificial Intelligence Society, Dr. Jassim Haji. Hello, Dr. Jassim. It's good to have you here with us tonight. Can you tell us about the advanced innovation method Methods of Bahrain throughout the past year, as well as how it made use of innovation in dealing with the repercussions of the pandemic. Good evening. Um, of course, if you look at the innovations in Bahrain, you have to take a step back 
and look how the leadership created a synergy and innovation centric uh, community in 2019. His Majesty, in opening uh, sessions of the Parliament, stressed on the future of science and uh, artificial intelligence. And they saw that the uh, Supreme calls for the woman in 2019. They called it the year of the woman in the innovations. Of course, we don't forget the fourth year of uh, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad. Uh, innovation and artificial intelligence competition, which we get every year, hundreds of students gather with their ideas to display the latest on the technology. And of course, this year in March, we displayed over 45 projects related to innovations, uh, artificial intelligence, the future science with Bahraini men and women graduates from various universities, which has displayed and many of them put into place. Uh, recently, we have established the artificial intelligence research and development in the Jiao area and NASA's vocational uh, training center. All these contribute to the innovations, the ideas that we rely a lot on the human capital of Bahrain in our uh, innovations and the students who graduate from various universities. And I think uh, we will see further progress in years to come from the uh, young Bahrainis in such important area. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the president of Artificial Intelligence Society, Dr. Jasim Haji. Thank you very much for joining us.